So you're out on the water in your weekend boat, and someone just told you that running your engine at idle is destroying it from the inside out. Sound familiar? The shocking truth behind running your engine at idle might not be what you've been told at the marina. Here's something that'll blow your mind. Some of the most expensive marine engines on the planet are literally designed to idle for hours, while others can suffer catastrophic damage in just minutes. But here's where it gets really interesting. The difference between engine life and engine death at idle often comes down to just a few hundred RPMs and understanding what's actually happening inside that power plant. This video will reveal the insider secrets that marine mechanics don't want you to know, including which engines thrive at idle, which ones will cost you thousands in repairs, and the surprising science behind why your boat's engine might actually love those lazy harbour days more than you think. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is idling? When your marine engine runs at idle, it's operating at its lowest sustainable speed, typically between 600 and 900 RPM for most marine applications. Think of it like your engine taking a slow jog instead of sprinting. During idle, your pistons are still pumping, valves are opening and closing, and fuel is being burned, but everything's happening at a leisurely pace. Here's where things get fascinating. At idle speeds, your engine operates in what engineers call a rich mixture condition. This means there's more fuel relative to air than at higher speeds. Your combustion chambers aren't getting the violent, complete burn they experience at cruising speeds. Instead, you're getting a gentler, less efficient combustion that leaves behind more unburned fuel and carbon deposits. It's like trying to start a campfire with damp wood. You get smoke and soot instead of a clean flame. The oil pressure at idle drops significantly too. While you might see anywhere from 40 to 80 psi at cruising speed depending on your engine, idle can drop you down to as low as 10 to 25 psi when the engine is hot. That's still typically enough to lubricate everything, but it's not the robust flow your engine experiences at higher RPMs. Your cooling system also slows down, the raw water pump moves less volume, and the thermostat might cycle more frequently as it tries to maintain optimal temperature. And hey, speaking of warming up, here's your first call to action. If you're finding this information valuable, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Trust me, what I'm about to reveal about trolling speeds will save you thousands in engine repairs. Now, before you swear off idling forever, let's talk about why we do it. First up, warming up your engine. Despite what your buddy with the Go Fast Boat tells you, modern marine engines absolutely need a proper warm-up period. Cold metal doesn't like to move, and thermal expansion is real. Those precisely machined tolerances in your engine need time to reach their designed dimensions. I'm talking about 5 to 10 minutes of easy idling to bring your engine oil up to temperature, not the 30-second fire-and-fly approach I see at the boat ramp every weekend. Then there's the waiting game. Whether you're sitting in a no-wake zone in your Sea Ray Sundancer, waiting for a bridge in your Formula 350 CBR, or just enjoying a sunset at anchor with the engine running for your air conditioning in that big Carver Voyager, idle is sometimes just part of boating life. For those of you who fish, and I'm talking to you Grady White and Boston Whaler owners, trolling is essentially extended idling with a purpose. You're asking your engine to run at speeds that would make a sloth look hyperactive, often for hours at a time. But here's a mind-bender for you. Did you know that commercial vessels often idle for days or even weeks at a time? Parker pilot boats, eastern lobster boats, tugboats waiting for ships, research vessels maintaining position, fishing boats working nets. These workhorses idle more than they run. The difference? They're equipped with engines specifically designed for this abuse, and that's where our story gets really interesting. Not all idols are created equal, and this is where knowing your specific engine becomes crucial. For most recreational gasoline marine engines, like what you'd find in a Chaparral 267 SSX, Regal 2800 Bowrider, or Sea Ray 290 SLX, 
You're typically looking at somewhere around 600 to 750 RPM in neutral, bumping up to 700 to 900 RPM in gear. But here's the kicker. These engines can vary by engine model and manufacturer, and they can make or break your engine's longevity. Take your typical Mercruiser 5.7 litre. It generally idles around 600 to 7 RPM in neutral, though specific models may vary. Drop much below 600 and you're entering what I call the death rattle zone, where oil pressure gets sketchy and carbon buildup accelerates. Bump it up too high and you're wasting fuel without gaining any real benefit. Diesel engines, they're a different animal entirely. A Yanmar diesel in a Beneteau Swift Traveller or a Cummins in a Tiara 44 Flybridge might idle happily at 600 RPM all day long, while a Volvo Penta in a Princess V50 might prefer 700 to 750. High-performance engines throw all these rules out the window. That supercharged 600-horsepower monster in your Donzi 38ZRC or Statement 368 SUV, it might want to idle at 900 to 1000 RPM just to keep the oil pressure happy and the plugs from fouling. The cam profiles in these engines are designed for high RPM operation, which means they're absolutely miserable at low speeds. It's like asking a Formula One car to navigate a McDonald's drive through Technically possible, but painful for everyone involved. Alright, let's talk about the engines that would rather sink than idle. Performance marine engines, I'm looking at you. Mercury Racing, Ilmore, and Supercharged Anything are the prima donnas of the marine world. These are the power plants you'll find in your cigarette racing boats, fountain power boats, and those gorgeous Nortec speed machines. These engines are built with radical cam timing, high compression ratios, and cooling systems designed for wide open throttle. At idle, they're basically slowly committing suicide. Here's what happens. Those aggressive cam profiles that give you face-melting acceleration, they create terrible cylinder scavenging at low RPM. Unburned fuel washes down the cylinder walls, diluting your oil. The high-performance valve springs that keep your valves in check at 6,000 RPM, they're overkill at idle, causing unnecessary wear on the cam lobes. And those massive fuel injectors that feed your need for speed, they're dumping way too much fuel at idle speeds, creating a rich condition that fouls plugs faster than you can say warranty void. I once saw a twin-turbocharged 1200-horsepower racing engine in a custom skater catamaran that had been used for harbor cruising. The owner thought he was being gentle on it. After 50 hours of mostly idling around the yacht club, the cylinders looked like the inside of a chimney, the turbos were coked up solid, and the oil looked like used roofing tar. That's a $30,000 lesson in matching engine design to intended use. The worst part? Carbon buildup in these engines creates hotspots that lead to detonation when you do finally open the throttle. It's a vicious cycle. Idle too much, build up carbon, create conditions for catastrophic failure when you actually use the performance you paid for. Some manufacturers now include carbon cleaning procedures that involve periodic wide open throttle runs just to blow out the accumulated crud. But here's the second hook I promised you. Not all engines fear the idle. In fact, some engines are so good at idling they could teach a meditation class. Commercial-grade diesels from companies like John Deere, Cat and Cummins are the zen masters of low-speed operation. These engines feature lower compression ratios, conservative cam timing, and robust cooling systems that actually work better at low speeds. Want to hear something that'll flip your understanding of engines upside down? These commercial diesels often last longer when used for extended idling than when run hard. How's that for counterintuitive? The secret lies in their design philosophy. While your neighbor's go fast is built like a thoroughbred racehorse, these engines are built like draft horses. Steady, reliable, and happiest when working at a sustainable pace. Take the John Deere 6068 series, a favorite among trawler owners and commercial operators. You'll find these reliable workhorses in Grand Banks trawlers, Nordhaven Passage Makers, and Katie Krogan Expedition Yachts. 
This engine can idle for literally thousands of hours without complaint. The design features that make this possible include moderate compression ratios, cooling systems sized for continuous operation, and fuel injection systems optimized for low speed efficiency, meaning less wet stacking and carbon buildup. Even in the gasoline world, there are idle friendly options. The Mer Cruiser engines, when left in relatively stock form, are surprisingly tolerant of extended idling. You'll find these in countless Bayliner cruisers, Four Winds Vista models, and Monterey sport yachts. Their truck DNA shows through. These engines were designed to sit in traffic, idle at job sites, and generally live a life of varied speeds. Transfer that technology to marine use, and you've got an engine that won't throw a tantrum when you're trolling for salmon all day in your sea swell striper or trophy walk around. If you're learning something new, drop a comment below about your idling experiences. Has your engine ever let you down after extended low speed operation? I read every comment and love hearing your stories. Now, let's switch gears completely and talk about the opposite end of the spectrum. Wide Open Throttle, or WOT as the cool kids call it. Running your engine at high RPMs isn't just about speed, it's actually therapeutic for many engines, especially those prone to carbon buildup from idling. Here's something most boaters don't realize. Your engine was designed to run at a significant percentage of its maximum rated RPM for extended periods. That's not abuse, that's normal operation. At these speeds, combustion is complete and violent. In a good way, carbon gets blasted out of the chambers and your cooling system operates at peak efficiency. It's like taking your engine to the gym. A good workout keeps everything healthy. The Italian tune-up isn't just for cars. Marine mechanics have been prescribing WOT runs to cure idle-related ailments for decades. Got a slight miss at low speed, fouled plugs, sluggish throttle response. A few minutes at WOT might solve all these problems without turning a wrench. The intense heat and pressure can help burn away carbon deposits, while the high oil pressure flushes contaminants from bearings and galleries. But here's where it gets interesting. There's a right and a wrong way to do a WOT run. You can't just firewall the throttle from a cold start. Please don't be that guy. Proper procedure involves warming up to operating temperature, running at moderate speed for a few minutes, then gradually increasing to WOT. Hold it there for 30 seconds to a minute, then gradually reduce speed. It's like stretching before exercise. Skip it at your peril. So what's a boater to do? The answer lies in understanding your specific engine and using it accordingly. If you've got a high-performance power plant but spend most of your time putting around the harbor, you're going to have problems. It's like buying a Lamborghini for grocery runs. Sure, it'll do it, but neither you nor the car will be happy about it. For most recreational boaters, the key is variety. Mix up your operating speeds. If you spend Saturday trolling for fish in your Wellcraft 252 Fisherman, make Sunday about a high-speed run to your favorite beach. That extended idle time waiting for the bridge in your Chris Craft Catalina. Follow it up with some spirited acceleration once you're clear. Your engine will thank you for the variety. Consider installing an idle adjustment if your engine allows it. Bumping your idle speed up just 50 to 100 RPM can make a huge difference in oil pressure and combustion efficiency. Some engines also benefit from idle mixture adjustments, though this is best left to professionals with exhaust gas analyzers. For those who simply must idle extensively, Liverboards in their Hatteras motor yachts, commercial operators with Parker sport cabins, serious anglers in their Viking convertibles. Consider an engine designed for the task. Yes, it might mean giving up some top-end performance, but an engine that runs reliably is worth more than bragging rights about a top speed you'll rarely see. Modern engine management systems have made huge strides in addressing idle-related issues. Variable valve timing, cylinder deactivation, and sophisticated fuel injection strategies all help modern engines cope with extended low-speed operation. 
Some newer outboards on boats like the Pursuit S328 Sport or Roballo R302 even have special trolling modes that optimize engine parameters specifically for those low, slow fishing days. Electronic controls have revolutionized idle quality too. Where old mechanical engines might hunt and surge at idle, modern electronic throttle bodies maintain rock-steady RPMs. This consistency means better oil pressure, more complete combustion, and less stress on engine components. But technology isn't a magic bullet. Even the most sophisticated engine management system can't overcome basic physics. If you're running a high-strung performance engine at idle for hours on end, you're still going to have problems. The computer might mask the symptoms longer, but the underlying issues remain. So what's the shocking truth about running your engine at idle? It's not the universal engine killer some claim, nor is it completely harmless. Like most things in boating, the real answer is, it depends. It depends on your engine design, your operating patterns, and your maintenance habits. The real shock might be how much money you can save by matching your engine choice to your actual usage patterns. That high-performance dream machine might impress at the dock, but if you're spending most of your time trolling in your contender center console or harbor cruising in your Cobalt A28, you're literally paying to slowly destroy your investment. Meanwhile, the guy with the boring diesel in his main ship pilot or the stock V8 in his Rinker Express Cruiser might be the smartest boater at the marina. Remember these key takeaways. Performance engines hate extended idling and will punish you with carbon buildup, fouled plugs, and premature wear. Commercial grade and moderate performance engines can idle all day without complaint. Regular high-speed runs are medicine for any engine that spends significant time at idle. And most importantly, know your engine's preferences and operate accordingly. Your engine doesn't care about your ego or what the guys at the marina think. It only cares about operating conditions that match its design intent. Respect that and you will enjoy years of reliable service. Ignore it and you'll become very familiar with your marine mechanic's kids' names as you pay for their college education one repair bill at a time. If you found this deep dive into marine engine idling helpful, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more myth-busting marine content. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next video, where we'll tackle the controversial topic of ethanol fuel in marine engines. Trust me, what I've discovered will change how you fuel up forever. Until next time, keep your engines happy, whether that's at idle or wide open throttle, and we'll see you on the water.